welcome to the show Visitor's Book. I'm your host Hara Mustafa and our guest today is a Chinese teacher who teaches here at a local university here in Pakistan. So let's go meet her and find out what she has to share about her experience here in the country. It's then so good to see you. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right. Uh, I mean, thank you so much for having us today with you. I would like to start with that you came to Pakistan for the first time in 1996. What was the first impression in your mind when you got to know that you are coming to Pakistan? Um, expecting to come here, excited. Okay. <laughs> Very excited to say it's a new thing and it's a new place. It's a new world for me. Okay, so like you were excited yes. and uh, I mean, what did your father told you about the country? It's a beautiful place. All right. And um, did he tell you something special about Pakistan that is it safe to live here? Yes, that's why I came here. Yes. Okay. So you were excited and you know, your father gave you an overview of the situation here in the country. And um, at that time, your father was working as a trade representative for the yes. Xinjiang government. Yes. What kind of work he was doing here? It's basically, he was doing, it's helping the people to, if in case they have any problem like uh, the contract, he will try to solve as represent one side, just try to solve the problems, any issues. Since you told that your father was working here as a trade representative, where was he posted? Islamabad. Islamabad, okay. So, I mean, when you landed here, can you recall the, you know, scenario back then? Oh, it was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I arrived on Sunday. I still remember that time, it was Friday was a holiday. All right. And actually, I, you can see I land here on the weekdays and it was so peaceful. Mm -hmm. So we, I came from the airport to Islamabad. I feel no traffic jam. It's very less people on the road. Mm -hmm. It's like a very relaxed place. All right. You know, that's, that's where you feel you want to spend more and you want to discover here. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of place makes you very relaxed, actually. The main thing is you make it very comfortable. Okay. And back then, you were only 19 years old. And so did you have an idea that you will be coming to Pakistan for a lifetime? No. <laughs> no. I thought I'd just stay about two, three years, then we go back to China. What was the thing that surprised you most when you landed here for the first time? Not many. Because mm -hmm. actually, I was living in a Muslim area. All right. I was living in Xinjiang. M majority are Muslims. They're looking and the features, they are pretty similar. Okay. So I don't feel I've, I've been going out. I still feel I'm like the similar place. So Ms. Lynn, let's talk about your educational background. And you said that when you were only 19 years old, you came to Pakistan to continue your studies. What made you think to come to Pakistan to continue your studies? Uh, because of uh, here, it's as an English media country. Okay. So I can improve my English. All right. So then I, when I go back, I can get opportunities. Okay. That's and during that time, you were enrolled in Chinese University, Kashgar, Xinjiang. What were you studying back in China? Finance. Finance. What made you choose to study finance? I got admitted in that university. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best for me at that time. All right. Also, you mentioned that when you came to Pakistan, uh, you started learning English language courses yes, from yes. Namal University. Namal University. Why did you study English language? Uh, because of uh, as my major finance, it yeah. really helped me. Because actually, that time China start more trading international tradings, so English would help on my career purpose. Okay, so for your career boosting, yes, you yes. opted to study English language. Yes. How would you describe the environment of the education system here? It's different. Mm -hmm. Because here you're going O levels and uh, A levels. In China, we're going for the high schools, but both are 12 years. All right. But but we are as high, uh, high school. We have the fixed 
you're doing arts or you're doing uh, what do you call it science all right but the choice is much less than the O levels and okay. A levels so are there any similarities between the two countries when it comes to the education system no I'm I because here I know the O level A levels I'm right. not so, so, so sure about the metrics mm -hmm. So I, the only compare I can compare the old A levels and right. this high school thing. Is there anything that both the countries learn in this field? Uh, if we talk about education, chemistry, physics, chemistry, bio. You think that these are the subjects that both the countries can, you know, improve? Yes. In terms of teaching, or in terms of the content you're talking about? Teaching. All right. Was it easy for you to complete your education here in Pakistan? Uh, not that easy because actually I was, my strong point is Chinese. Mm -hmm. But here since I came here, I have to do everything in English. Okay. All right. That's, it's a, uh, at that time, it's a bit difficult for me. And also at that time, I don't have much references as now because mm -hmm. now you can go online to search. Yeah. At that time, even no internet. Okay. <laughs> That's All right. major, I think. So, Ms. Lin, at the time when you arrived here in Pakistan, the security situation was quite much different back uh, in the country. How would you relate your experience to that? But actually, is that I'm, I'm more in Islamabad. Yeah. I don't feel much the less. I feel very safe. All right. Oh. Me and my friend, we used to go out alone. Okay. And 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 I I, I personally feel I'm 96. Islamabad is a much much safe place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though I miss that time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so do you feel that the country has evolved over the years? I mean, in which field? Would you like to describe it? Your own personal experience? Mm, like technology? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, because I, I, I'm the one that's later I did my IT. I can feel Pakistan IT. It's pretty strong. Okay. It's very strong, especially when you look at the Nadra system, everything. Mm -hmm. I would feel in certain area, especially in IT related field, Pakistan mm -hmm. strong. Okay, so that's a positive thing. We can yes. say that that the country has improved over the years. Yes. All right. So, Miss Lin, since we were we are already talking about your education career here in Pakistan, was there any difficulty you faced because of the language barrier, or it was easy for you as an education? Yeah. Actually, the problem for me is as available references books. It's very limited at that time. Mm -hmm. I cannot like now I can go go online to search I can use a lot of like a digital interpreter like a Google Translate that I'm nothing All the right. only thing I have is a big dictionary okay so whatever you you have the new words you have to search from the dictionary and note it down okay so that was a major drawback at that time I All believe right. so you struggled with the language yes so how was the environment when it comes to the teaching? Were the teachers being cooperative oh, and the supportive? The teacher was very nice. I still remember my teacher in Namo. I still remember my the head of department, Dr. Mm -hmm. Amina. She's right. very helpful. And my class teacher, Ma'am Nahid, mm -hmm. and many teachers, I still remember them. Okay. And when it comes to the, you know, friendships here in Pakistan, did you able to make Pakistani friends back at the time when you were studying here? Yes, we have a lot. But actually that time in my section, we have more mixed. We have about uh, two sisters from Saudi Arabia. All right. One girl from Libya. Uh, I think one from Italy. I think one from Iran. All right. And uh, one from Korea and two from China okay. and the two from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It was small class and we had a lot of fun. And every week, at, 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 at least not every week, every second week, we will bring different, different food. During our break, we enjoy like Arabic food, leave right. our food, you know, that was, that was really a fun time. I really miss that time. Oh, okay. Yes. So do you want to relive that time? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, now if we talk about your family, are they settled here with you? 
Yes, because of actually it's my in-laws are born here. Okay. They were born here. All right. My, my father-in-law born in Pakistan. My, my husband also born in Pakistan. Oh, okay. So how often do you visit China? I think that because now, because of COVID, yeah. that my last visit was 2017. 2017. 2017. Ah. And because of the COVID situation yes, that we, you were not able to yeah, go back I actually, to China again. Actually, because of quarantine and anything, I don't have that much long holiday to visit. So Ms. Lin, you're basically from Xinjiang province. Would you like to describe it? How is it? It's a beautiful place. It is a desert. Mm -hmm. But we have we have we built the cities on the oasis. But we have a lot of tasty foods like watermelons, apricot, yeah. peach, apples, mm -hmm. and the fruits over there. The fruits are so sweet because right. of the, they have a longer sunlight. Mm -hmm. And then the food-wise. Over there is majority as mutton because of uh, that. Yeah. We have a lot uh, similar, like here we have palau, mm -hmm. the mutton palau, we have the tikka, we have nams. Yeah. So a lot of similarities. In terms of food? Yes. All right. So Ms. Lin, you are basically from Kashgar, right? And it's famous as an international bazaar in which people from around the world came for, you know, import and export stuff. Yes. So how would you describe that? Oh, that's a very big bazaar. You you find many many things, like the dry fruits, yeah, uh, the local silk, and then we uh, the carpet, the hand, hand handicraft, and even you will find something from Pakistan. Really? Yes. What is it like? Uh, like here those uh, marble wells, yeah, and the uh, brass wells, you All know right. those. Uh, and sometimes you, you can find the stones from Pakistan. Okay. And the the cloths. Okay, that's so interesting yes. and fascinating. Did you able to find something uh, you know similar to that here in Pakistan? When we talk in about the, the China handicrafts. market in Pingdi? <laughs> yeah, specifically. Yes. Did you get a ch chance to visit that place? Many many places, many many times. So what do you like most about it? Oh. I would say you can f see a lot of things from China mm -hmm. and you have much more choice. All right. Especially when we make in a restaurant, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of beautiful decoration pieces from there and that's from China. All right. It looks, you know, that make me feel, you know, more like a home. Okay. So Ms. Lin, China is famous, you know, for having diverse culture. I mean, in terms of like you were living in Xinjiang. So different ethnic groups are living there and different cultures are being practiced there. Yes. How would you describe the experience? Actually, since I've been here so over there so long, it's like we do uh, over there, they do celebrate Eid. Yeah. And uh, when they eat, they have a big functions. Mm -hmm. uh, people are dancing. Yeah, and they play uh, some games there, mm -hmm. and it's become it's it's part of life. All right. I mean, is it similar to Pakistan here when we, when it comes to the Eid celebrations? Uh no. Okay. Because of in China, in Xinjiang, the Eid they have a big gathering in front of the mosque. All right. They play the the local the drums mm -hmm. and they dance. Okay, it's nice. more, it's different. It's very different. So that's so interesting to know that the culture is really diverse there in China. And now it's time to take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with the Chinese teacher, Miss Lin. So Miss Lin, uh, if we talk about your wedding, you got married to a Chinese-born Pakistani guy. So how did it happen? Um, at that time, I was student. Uh, my father brought us, that time I think, there's very few Chinese restaurants here. All right. My father brought us here to have lunch, mm -hmm. then I met him. Okay, here at the Golden Dragon. Yes, I okay. met him here. So you might have a lot of memories here. Ha, <laughs> yes. Would you like to describe a few of them? Uh, Especially the time when you meet that husband of yours? Yeah, we just met each other. 
but mm -hmm. we never thought, you know, he would be my future husband. Future husband. All right. Just as simple. Then slowly, slowly, we get used to uh, to know each other. All right. Then we were together. And you also mentioned that when you came here for the first time in 1996, you never thought of setting here in Pakistan for yes. a lifetime. So how yeah. did it happen? Yeah, because of him. Okay. Because his family is here, his roots is here. Mm -hmm. And the, the main thing is, at that time when we got married, he can't speak Chinese. All right. Okay, so how did you guys interact it? I English. Mean. That's that's where I get practice with him. Okay, so you learn basically English language because I practice of... with him. Okay, and he because of me he started to learn the basic Chinese with me. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's so nice. Yeah, because we speak different dialect. I'm I speak Mandarin mm -hmm. because he's Hakka. He speak Hakka. Okay. All right. So I can't, at that time, I couldn't understand what they're talking about. Oh. It's different dialect. All right. So did you manage to learn that dialect? Um, because of actually after marriage, my in-laws moved to Canada. Mm -hmm. So because for the convenience, still now we use English more. Okay. English plus Chinese mm -hmm. and sometimes mix with Urdu all right sometimes he mix a little bit with his Hakka it's basically we use a language sometimes only we can understand okay so you actually always look out for your comfort zone yes how you know sometimes because yeah. of when you talk suddenly this word you know you got stuck okay then I use a one which I know. Oh, okay. So how much Urdu do you, um, have you managed to learn? I don't know how much I learn, but my Urdu, I can communicate in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, okay. I have seen with that my, already. <laughs> yes, with my staff. They yeah. can understand me better. All right. Okay. So Ms. Lin, when you, you know, you made this, this decision that you will be marrying this Chinese origin Pakistani based person, what was the impression of your family? They have a shop too. Okay. Because I have, it means I will stay here. All right. Because at that time in China, I already have my job. Oh, okay. So what so were you it doing? Means I have to, uh, in a bank. So um, it means that you will be relocated to Pakistan. Yes, yes. So because it turned... it, I have to give up that. Mm -hmm. to, it, it was a good job at that time, mm -hmm. you consider. So that basically, I have to give up everything and stay here with him. Oh, okay. So that was a big decision, right? Yes. And uh, did you have a Pakistani or Chinese wedding? Um, you can see it's mixture. Okay. Because he mixture has, of both the cultures. Yeah, because we have a lot of he has a lot of Pakistani friends. Mm -hmm. Because since you know he was born here, his education, everything here. So, and also the family, fa friends, uh, our majority, the guests are Pakistan. Okay. We have also, uh, obviously, we have a lot of overseas Hakka people. We invited, but majority are from Pakistan. All right. <laughs> okay. I mean, you mentioned that you met him here at the Golden Dragon and your in-laws actually run this Chinese restaurant. Yes. So what was the main idea of opening this Chinese restaurant here in the main capital of Pakistan? Um, actually, this restaurant was opened before I was born. Mm -hmm. All right. At that time, they shift from Lahore. Okay. And uh, with the help of the friend, they found this place. Oh, all right. So actually, my mother-in-law was telling me this place, it was the only building in F73. All right. So that's with the help, the help of they found this one and my mother has a passion. He loves to. Oh, okay. So actually the, our menu, majority of the menu is made by her, okay. my mother-in-law. So do you have any interest in cooking? Yes, later on because of um, a lot of things I want to eat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I cannot. Mm -hmm. So the only way to learn it, they like now we have the Chinese traditional handmade noodle, hand pulled noodles. All right. This is because of we love it, but we cannot find Islam up anywhere. Oh, okay. So then we decided go back to China to learn it. 
Oh. And but because I need a lot of strength, it's mm -hmm. difficult for me. Then my husband went to China. He learned the noodles, how to make the noodles. He worked in the noodle shop. Oh, okay. And then he brought back this technology mm -hmm. and transferred to our local stuff. We also make a traditional handmade dumplings. We call it jiaozi. Mm -hmm. So basically we have uh, two sets of menus. One more suit for the Chinese and also a lot of uh, Chinese, uh, Pakistani students they studied in China, they especially came here to have that food. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. And then we have another set, it's more like a Pakistani Chinese, like chicken Manchurian. Mm -hmm. You know, that set, we have basically, we have these two sets of menus. Because of the pandemic, the situation has changed exactly. gradually. So how is the response uh, of the people here? I find now the people come back to the normal life. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, people are willing to go, go out, coming out, have food. Yes, and last year, last year, March, it yeah. was the worst. I think last year, January to May, it was the worst situation. Yeah. That time it was very bad. But now, slowly, slowly, people are coming out, especially after we got vaccination, yeah. are people more willing to come out? Wow, that's a fascinating journey. I mean, I mean, how did this restaurant evolve and grew? So and now I'd like to talk about your work, right? Yes. So you actually teach Chinese language here at a local university. Yes. How is your experience as a teacher? It's, it's different. Okay. It's very different mm -hmm. because before I was used to do the interpreting, all the things. And compared to that, as a teacher, my working routine are more fixed. Mm -hmm. Because I have to go to the lecture, check the homework, check the papers. Uh, I can, I, uh, the students are very cooperative yeah. and they're very nice. And mm -hmm. since they are bigger, the universities they are more easy to deal with okay and this is very i i would say that as a teacher the life uh, i can spend more time with my family with my children yeah so miss lin uh for how long you have been teaching chinese language here in Pakistan? i think past five years past five years that's a long period what made you you know uh, choose chinese language to teach here in Pakistan? Mm. Because of actually now the China started coming up mm -hmm. and more and more people they're uh, doing the trade and the business yeah. with China. And with this one belt sea pack thing, yeah. uh, a lot of Pakistani, they are willing to work with Chinese. Mm -hmm. And the in that, they need a language. True. But uh, the problem with me is I have three children. Okay. So then I find that as teach, as teaching, it's more easier for me mm -hmm. to do a job. <laughs> okay, all right. So you can say your uh, motivation behind this yes. profession is your children, yes. right? And also I can teach my children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know the Chinese language, it's not exactly the easy language to learn. Yeah. If, and my children, they're used to the English. Okay. Because that's alphabet based. Mm -hmm. The Chinese language is character based. All right. So for them, they say, oh, the other people can learn. Why can't they learn? Because they are Chinese, but they don't know Chinese. That's very sad for that. All right. <laughs> so, Ms. Lin, it's been like almost three decades that you're living here in Pakistan. What are the major cultural differences between the two countries? Similarities, not much. All right. Because China, I can see the living speed are much faster mm -hmm. here a bit slower okay so you can say that life is a little slow here in pakistan slow and relaxed it's more relaxed in pakistan as compared to china compared to china otherwise like a culture for this i don't feel much mm -hmm. i'm more used to here the culture and but only thing i feel the life here is more relaxed. All right. So, Ms. Lin, since you have been teaching here from like the last five years, 
I mean, uh, how much Pakistanis are keen to learn this language? And also, uh, do you get a chance to, you know, teach uh, foreigners or expats who are living here in the country? Yeah, I did once. It was a French couple. Mm -hmm. And they were, I think, the next post would be China. All right. So that's why they were interested to mm -hmm. learn Chinese. And another one, it was, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a Chinese and the Pakistan intermarriage. Okay. And their children like to learn Chinese because mm -hmm. they want to know that their root language because yeah. a father same like my husband cannot speak. All right. So that's the reason I'm teaching. And all oh, then majority are Pakistani students, uh, some from university, someone or want to go to China for their further studies. Oh, okay. How much is Beijing different from Islamabad? Beijing, Islam has more greeneries. Yeah. Um, Beijing is more populated All right. and more bigger buildings. Mm -hmm. It's it's like uh, the building next to each other. Here you have a lot of space. You can see the green, the trees, the birds. Yeah. Especially in Beijing and the daytime, you can't see those birds. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Is there something you miss most about China here in Pakistan? The food. Food. Yes. But you already run your, you know, um, restaurant here. Well, actually, the thing is in China, they have so many cuisines. Mm -hmm. For certain things, we can't get it here. All right. Like the Chinese fire pot, the roast bacon duck. Mm -hmm. Um, here is difficult. All right. Okay. And what about your children? Which city is your favorite? My children, they they been been to different part of China, the but they still prefer Pakistan. This is their home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about Pakistan. Pakistan. Here. Yeah. Okay. So, which city is their favorite? I think Islamabad. Islamabad. Then why is that so? Um, clean and does they have more freedom to go out all right yes and also their friends okay their friends are from the childhood okay that's this is amazing. amazing since we're talking about you know uh, your kids like which city is your favorite i would like to ask like you, during your childhood you have spent like uh, your childhood in different parts of yes. china which one was your favorite at the time when your dad was posted in different cities? Actually, it's the Xinjiang. Xinjiang. Yes. Because of, yeah, I've been to Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, those places. But I love Xinjiang. Oh. Somehow, uh, at that time, Xinjiang is not as developed as in Shanghai. That, but the thing I love most is the people of Xinjiang. All right. They are more open. Okay. I mean, would you say that the people there are somewhat similar here in Pakistan? Yes, yes. You you feel the welcome. Okay. In Xinjiang, you feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Because of in Beijing, Shanghai, those places, they are faster. All right. The people, uh, they are more busier. Mm -hmm. But in Xinjiang, because of their, I think, the ethnic group, I think they are, that's their nature. They are more friendly. You feel, you know, like you, you, you're back to home. All right, Ms. Lynn, that's so interesting to know. And now it's time to take a short break. I will catch you guys in a while. Welcome back. We are here right now at a beautiful park right next to the restaurant. So how do you like the ambience? I love it. Um, before this COVID, we used to work every day here. Really? Yes. The children, my mother, we loved you. We love this park. We love this area. Really? That, yeah, yes. that's a really wonderful area to relax. Yes. Especially on weekends. Every day, not only weekend. Every day we can just uh, after dinner because we take earlier dinner. Normally around six o'clock. All right. We just come out, take the children and my mother. We just walk around here. So do you still come here now? Uh, not now because mom my mother is old, 70 plus. All right. So prefer to let her stay home, mm -hmm. you know, safe for her. Okay. So like uh, how much has the pandemic affected your life and work here? Um, we used to have the face-to-face -face teaching 
And now we most shift almost everything online. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I say I can spend more time with my children. All right, now. Yes, because they are home. Mm -hmm. They are mostly, you know, they are also online. I can keep an eye on the children. I can do my work at the same time. Okay. Uh, we spend more time, especially with my husband, as a whole family. We have more family time. Okay. But plus, uh, because of the lockdown, uh, we expand our daily menu. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of things you cannot get from outside. So yeah. then you start to do by yourself. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, how did uh, you say that lockdown has, you know, evolved your life? Um, we are more home based. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing things more by ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more um, quality family life. We watch movie together, we play together. Sometimes we play some very stupid childish game with children. Okay. And, yeah. Did you manage to find any hobbies or activities? Ah, cooking mostly. Mm -hmm. Because of find uh, uh, we got more interesting re recipes. I try at home like baking. Now is my new thing to I discovered new more into the baking and also i discovered few more uh, nice local recipe like alu gosh alu gosh uh, and then right. we started making the biryani at home really yes and uh, this this is which you know so i mean how would you say i mean uh, since you're living here for a quite long time did you manage to try any Pakistani cuisine or what's your favorite food you could say? Um, as a family, all, all of us, we love, love alu gosht. Okay. But that's not available outside. But um, before, um, weekly on Saturday, Sunday, we used to go to go get the chole. We used right. to get the paya mm -hmm. and the nahari. All right. <laughs> the, the local desi yeah. breakfast. And uh, my favorite is the uh, chicken karai and the takata. -tak. So with the foreigners, I have noticed that they're more inclined towards chicken karai or uh -huh. chicken biryani. Why is that so? I guess the chicken is all the everyone loves it. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. Fair and enough. And especially the chicken karai, it's not so spicy. Okay. I guess that. So you you feel that the food here is not that spicy? Uh, no, 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 no. It's like when you have this, uh, last time we went to Karachi, the student biryani. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's killing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, I oh. can't handle that spicy. It was too spicy. Yes, it's too spicy. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, Miss Lynn, like you must have been, you know, to different places of Pakistan. Uh, would you like to, you know, describe your experience when you were in Naran Kagan? Naran Kagan, it was with my friends. Uh, we went as a group. Mm -hmm. um, it was pleasant, and I remember it was in May. Mm -hmm. uh, we went. We stayed two nights there. All right. It it, it was a pleasant journey and exciting and scary and scary also yes. because of the you know yes, the roads the and the bumpy roads yes, yes yeah. because of height yes. okay. I'm, I'm a bit worried i'm scared of heights all right otherwise it was a beautiful journey all right so did you manage to see lahore karachi yes we've been i've been to lahore many times mm -hmm. i went to lahore went to karachi we went uh been to Peshawar. I've been to Abdabad and uh, because of uh, we have our family relatives are there. All right. So we visit them. So because of that, did you manage to see Vaga border, yes. you know, ceremony? It's very famous. Yes. It's very famous. And it's a it's a kind of shocking. It's also a shock it's, for you. It's, Why? No, it's, it, no it's, it's kind of shocking the way it is. It's not a shocking. I can't use a word. But it's you make make you feel proud. Maybe you can say it's you know um, it's a mix of both the cultures. Uh, no, it, it it's 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 a kind of uh, sense make you proud. Are you being Pakistan? 
Oh yeah. You know that kind of sense. Yeah. All right. Because so, especially when you see that they exchange the a feel uh, of patriotism. Yes. Maybe? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Exactly. And ha have you been able to try any street food here in Pakistan? We went to Pindi. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, I don't know the name. It was a stadium. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Raul Pindi Stadium. Yes. Now it's a street food, food street. Food street there. You used to go there. And I used to go to this um, Melody food street. Yes. We used to go there too. Okay. And uh, very often we go to Rana Market to buy the uh, chuli and the Nahari. They have a very good Nahari there. All right. So would you say like the street food culture is pretty much similar to uh, China also? Yes, yes. Very much. But the only thing is in China, the street food, they are more late. Okay. It can be, you can go at 1, 2 in the morning. They start, uh, they do not start in the daytime. They start around 6, 7 mm -hmm. p.m. until about 1, 1 2 a.m. Okay, so they basically start in the evening and yes. ending up late like in the, the street, night. Mostly street food, like the uh, street market, they all only operate at night. All right. They do not operate in the daytime. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the amazing. only difference you feel yes, that yes. is, uh, I mean, different here in Pakistan. Yes. All right. So, Mr. have you able to manage uh, enough Pakistani friends, or you can say it's a you know mix of locals and as well as foreigners? The friends. Yeah, the friends. Um, actually, now the friend which I have mostly is the locals. All right. And before you used to have many uh, foreigners, but a lot of them they have left. Okay. A lot of them have left because right. they are on their missions, and then then after that it become very less. Mostly I mix with local friends. What do you like most about the Sambas? The greenery. Mm hmm and a peace. This is what I like. So maybe you can say that life here in Istanbul is very peaceful and peaceful, calm. Peaceful, yes. As compared to Beijing? Yes, yes. Because that's more hectic. Mm -hmm. You know, in the morning you go out, you have to travel two, three hours to your job. After job, you have to travel another one and a half hour back. All right. So your life just basically... Okay. Yes. All right. And here, uh, compared to other city in Pakistan, is here I can be more independent to go out. Okay. <laughs> I, um, you know, it's like in Lahore, in Karachi. I have to request my husband to take me out. Yeah. But here I can go out. You know. Yeah. This because is, you yeah. you have been living here for I mean, quite a long yes, time, I and know. now you are familiar with the place. Very familiar here. with the place, with the environment. Mm -hmm. with the shopkeepers yeah. so that's it's like my home okay so maybe we can call it this is your second home yes it is and uh, are you looking or planning to go back to china in the future no at the moment i don't have that plan <laughs> because of at least i have to wait for my children they graduate then if they want to go back then when i'm retired i might follow if they don't want, I have to... It's This is my home now. So Ms. Lin, I mean, due to the pandemic, the situation here in Pakistan also changed. Have you started uh, online classes? Yes. Yes. Majority of our classes online. Mm -hmm. And from, uh, I think, in universities, uh, we started the physical class on June. All right. So was it easy for you to cope up with the situation, you know, um, uh, in terms of online yes, learning? Yes, initially it, it took me some time mm -hmm. to get used to, to uh, speak in front of the screen. All right. You know, you know in, 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 instead of the, with students, obviously with online, the interact with students is much less. Mm -hmm. But for the safety, we have to do keep it. Keep online. Yeah. And also slowly, slowly we get used to it. And how is the situation in China right now? Um, from my friends, they are pretty fine. Their life, everything is back to normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. They right. do have few cases, mm -hmm. but uh, the business is normal. And uh, uh, I think the children are getting resting. The school will be normal. It's almost back to normal. 
Oh, because okay. things are being under control in China yes, also now. Yes. Just the way it is in yes. here in Pakistan. Yes. Since you mentioned that you have been to Karachi also, which places you visited there? I mean, you know, the beach there. I've been the to the beach. beach is very we, famous. Yes, we spend the night there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a place, I think that's called, uh, what? It's a big market, it's very famous. I don't remember. Is it a mall? Uh, the mall uh, as Cliff. Clifton Mall, we've been there almost every day. All right. And then we also in the local market. Okay. So how would you compare there, the local market of Karachi with Islamabad? Is it different or similar? Very different. Very different. More variety. <laughs> you were in Karachi? Yes. All right. <laughs> you have more choice than Islamabad. Okay. As a shopping, yes, of course. Okay. So are you a shopaholic kind of person? Not now. Before, yes. Before the pandemic, yes, you were. What do you like most about Pakistan and the Pakistanis? What I like most here, actually, uh, it's very difficult to say because I've been here more than 20 years. Yeah, It's like my home. Mm -hmm. I like everything here. I'm used to here. All right. I mean, um, Pakistanis are more famous for their hospitality yes. and warmth they show to yes. the foreigners. Yes. So is it the same with you? Yes, I, I, I actually here is like a, a pretty, um, you can see, it's my day-to-day, -day, it's daily life. Yeah. Uh, you can see, when I go back to China, I'm not used to it. All right. I'm more used to the here, the culture, uh, the food, everything here. Mm -hmm. So you can see, I like the most, it's difficult to see everything. You can see everything I love here. I, you know, it's my part of, uh, it's part of my life, part of me. <laughs> okay, so Pakistani culture is yes, part of you it's, now. It's, it's become, you know, something you've been marinated here. <laughs> you can see it's like in a cooking view, you can see. I've been marinating in the Pakistani cultures, everything. I'm used to here. You can't say I like, I, I don't like what. All right. It's like when I ask you, it's like, it's my home. Okay, so you can say this in yeah. this manner, you can put it in this way that you are more like a Pakistani now. Yes, it's, it's like, it's, it's my home. You see, I, what I don't like, I, I like everything my home. All right, Ms. Lin, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank well, you. that's all for now. I will see you guys next week with another exciting episode of Wizards Book. And you can also follow us on our social media handles at indus.news. It's a goodbye for now. <laughs>